Okay, well, I think we should uh, get started now. Um, again, welcome. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone. Uh, I'm at the Transmart Foundation. Um, and this morning, uh, we'll be having a webinar uh, to discuss the, uh, the Datathon next week that um, hopefully you'll all be attending. Um, this is the uh, this is a, a series of webinars that we're having this week uh, to discuss the the various uh, aspects of the datathon that will take place next week. Um, today's talk will be uh, about the datathon itself, uh, what are our goals, uh, how the datathon will operate, uh, and a little bit about the, some of the background. Um, we will also have tomorrow a special session on some of the data sets. Uh, that are coming out of the University of Luxembourg, uh, some of the details of the work that they've been doing, some of the curation on the various data sets uh, and their Parkinson's disease map uh, that they will be presenting. And then on Thursday, a couple of the vendors who will also be present at the Datathon uh, will be showing us their tools uh, and discussing how uh, they can be used uh, next week. Uh, yesterday, we conducted a special training class uh, we did record that session, and uh, that will be posted uh, in about the next hour or two. Uh, so if you missed it, you'll be able to watch it. Uh, today's uh, webinar will also be recorded, uh, and uh, that will be posted uh, hopefully later today. So uh, this morning, we have two speakers, Keith Ellison from the Transmark Foundation and Ken Kubota from the Michael J. Fox Foundation, uh, and they're going to take us through a uh, description of the datathon, our goals, and uh, how uh, it will be operating. So I'd like to introduce uh, Keith Elston, who will kick it off. Keith? Just unmuting myself, Rudy. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let me pull up my slides. And you uh, should. Yeah. There we go. There you go. So you should see those my slides now, Rudy. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for the, the introduction. Um, what I'd like to do is, is spend a little time today talking a bit about the, the overall uh, datathon, what our objectives are, um, some background on why we're interested in this, and what we're trying to achieve. Um, we've been working on putting this together for the past, oh, geez, I guess it's uh, since November uh, of last year. And I'm pretty excited that we're uh, we're going to be hosting the Datathon next week. Uh, this is the first Datathon for the Transmart Foundation, uh, one of many to come. Uh, and uh, I think like our hackathons, our testathons, our bug fixathons, uh, we see this as a, a really uh, great way to engage the community in doing some very interesting kinds of things. So uh, let me uh, just get started here. Um, uh, the datathon that we're hosting is, is focused on uh, uh, looking at across neurodegenerative diseases, specifically looking in areas like biomarkers, how to look at data, um, uh, what kinds of things can we find when we bring uh, a large number of data sets together in a platform like Transmart uh, in this. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the data, we'll talk a bit about the, uh, 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 what's involved in this process, but uh, what I'd like to do first is uh, introduce uh, Ken, who's been helping us organize this datathon. Uh, from the Michael J. Fox Foundation to give us a little background on on uh, on his interest in uh, the Datathon and what their motivation is coming from the Michael J. Fox Foundation in this particular area. So let me uh, turn it over to Ken. Thank you, Keith. And really, um, um, I can't take any credit for the organization of this Datathon. It's been really the hard work of the uh, Transmark Foundation with Keith and uh, Keith Ellingston, Kevin Smith. Rudy Potent Zone has really uh, made this possible and uh, gratified uh, for this to happen. The Fox Foundation, um, just a, as a preamble, is the world's largest nonprofit funder of Parkinson's disease research. Uh, it started in the year 2000. Uh, Michael J. Fox is a, is, a, uh, is a patient. He's also an advocate, obviously, uh, for Parkinson's disease. We have funded uh, half a billion dollars in research to date, 70 million of which uh, just been spent last year. We have no uh, endowment. We don't hold on to it every year by year. We spend out all the money that we, we um, raise from year to year, which adds uh, quite a bit of urgency um, to the culture of our foundation. 
you know, um, just uh, 89 cents of every dollar is spent on on funding scientific research. Next slide. So the reason why we're we, we're working on data and working with the Transmart Foundation is, you know, the um, and we're adding wearable sensors to to the data set is the paucity, paucity of real clinical measures and the cost of trials and ability to scale. So currently there there are not there aren't any objective measures of Parkinson's disease. Um, there's there's only a, a survey that's called the Universal Parkinson's disease rating scale. It's hard to detect progression in under a year. So, so uh, what's needed are uh, objective continuous measures uh, in the real world. This is the uh, our strategy for wearable sensors, and we believe that, that will bring down the cost of clinical trials uh, simply because we'll be able to scale the numbers of, of the individuals that, that, that attend these, these, these trials. We'll be able to get some real world measures and uh, be able to leverage uh, all the data that, that comes in um, to really understand you know, whether a, a certain therapy is working and also to track the natural history of Parkinson's disease. Next slide. So, you know, we are an important nexus in our technology that makes it makes this all possible. Uh, you know, biosensing wearable products being developed today could have just existed just four years ago, and we have uh, low energy Bluetooth radio. The iPhone 4s was first to implement that. that. We have a wireless uh, charging coil standards. Uh, MEMS accelerometers, you know, the, the price have, have dropped five times. So, you know, uh, they've gone from three dollars to basically 60, 60 cents in the past four years. This is pretty, pretty amazing, and it's they're pretty ubiquitous. They're in our phones, they're in our headsets, or in our automobiles, you name it. And so we could take advantage of that this this technology, the ubiquity of this technology, to map it on uh, to the clinical symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Next slide. So, um, you know, our aim is to speed trials while reducing costs, identify new phenotype types of Parkinson's disease, and improve the quality of care of Parkinson's disease patients. Obviously, you know, when we're monitoring patients, we might as well use the infrastructure to provide uh, clinically relevant information back to them. And so this is, this is our, this, these are our aims. Uh, next slide. Our system is, you know, we've partnered with the Intel Corporation to develop the system uh, for wearables. It's, it's a cloud Hadoop infrastructure that's going to gra grab massive loads of data and provide them uh, uh, to researchers. But this is, this is going to come along with um, other clinical information that we're gathering, the longitudinal data that you'll be exposed to in our data time. And it will be hosted on, on Transmart. Next slide. So this is the overall picture. Um, we have on the left, starting from the left, some seminal uh, observational studies, historical trials on Parkinson's disease uh, that have been conducted. One of which we should note is, uh, is called Datatop, that is, a, is one of a kind. It's, Followed Parkinson's disease patients through <laughs> three three different types of therapies over a course of eight years, um, and we're curating that data and making it available on Transmart. Also, you know, ADNI data, Alzheimer's disease data, PPMI, and others that complement uh, this database the data information on, on the natural that give clues to natural history of Parkinson's disease. Many of which you, that will be part of the the datathon, and moving forward, of course, we have the Intel platform, which is the wearables platform that we just discussed. I'll bring all this all this ambulatory information that will add on uh, to this rich clinical trial data, and we have Fox Insight, which is um, a patient uh, registry that's very much like uh, patients like me. Parkinson's disease patients can uh, log in, put in their uh, electronic medical history, their the drugs they've been taking, their experience with, with the disease, 
and that will also be coupled with uh, our wearables technology. And all of this gets curated into the Transmart platform, and we have our own instance of Transmart now, which we would like to share out to the rest of the world, working with the Transmart Foundation um, to truly make data open, not only open, but available and re readily understood. And really, this is what I, I believe uh, Transmart's all about. Our efforts here at the Datathon is all about changing the way scientific research is done. Next slide. That concludes, um, you know, the Fox Foundation's work um, and collaboration with the Transmart Foundation, and starting with this datathon, and hopefully for many years to come. Thank you. That's great. Thanks a lot, Ken. Um, I think most of you should be familiar with the uh, Transmart Foundation. Um, I'll just give you a quick, um, a quick overview of the foundation, and we'll dig right into the datathon. Uh, but to remind Mind you, the, the Transmart Foundation is a, a member-driven nonprofit foundation uh, that is developing an open source, open data, open science community uh, around the Transmart Translational Research Platform. Uh, the overall mission for the foundation has been to, to stimulate the growth and development of this community, of the platform, of the resources around it, uh, to enable the development of precision medicine. Uh, the Foundation's goals, um, as approved by our board, are to establish and sustain Transmart as the preferred data sharing and analytics platform uh, for translational research. Uh, importantly, to link academic, nonprofit, and corporate research communities for collaborative research facilitated by Transmart. And so the area where our data thon really uh, falls into place is, is bringing these groups together. Uh, to align and grow a vibrant developer network around the scientific goals of the community. Uh, we're currently working on the version 1.3 of the platform now. Uh, which is one of these uh, key objectives, and then to reduce the barriers to entry through the use of advanced technologies in an active marketplace. Uh, one of the key things that people that will work on this uh, platform in the datathon will see is the, uh, the broad use of uh, virtual machine images, etc., to be able to build and deploy these uh, platforms very, very quickly. Uh, the core principles of the foundation uh, are really around these three areas, open source, uh, the open source software and platform, uh, open data, uh, bringing data to the community in ways that can be uh, easily worked with, shared, utilized, and, and redistributed, uh, and then working together with, with the tools and the data to facilitate open science. Um, these are the cores that, that come together uh, with our datathon uh, coming up next week. Uh, we have a governance organized around these, so uh, open source, we have our code committee, co-chaired by uh, Jay Bergeron and E.K. Go. We have our uh, content committee, uh, co-chaired by Brian Athey at University of Michigan and Julie Bryant at Rancho Biosciences. And our community committee, uh, which is co-chaired by Kevin Smith and uh, Sherry Sal. Uh, the community committee is the group that organizes our events, our hackathons, our bug fixathons, our testathons, and now this, our, our first datathon. Um, but as I said, the, the real focus is bringing the community together and, and hosting these types of community events. A little bit of background for those of you that, that um, uh, need any background on translational research. Um, the key focus of translational research is being able to apply uh, what's happening in basic uh, research back to what's uh, really being driven forward in terms of new therapy development, uh, new diagnostic development, and, and new treatments for patients. The challenge is it takes a very long time, it's very error prone, and this is why we all need to work together uh, to achieve uh, the goals. Uh, the challenges, as outlined by Ken, uh, are that uh, the data that we're developing today is, is really big data, and it's not just big data in terms of, of volume, uh, but it's also big data in terms of velocity and complexity. Uh, when we look at the, the, the types of data that we need to bring together uh, for uh, translational research, um, we're not just looking at clinical data, but we're looking at uh, various molecular data, metabolomics, proteomics, microRNAs, uh, epigenomics, transcriptomics, uh, full genome variants. Uh, we have all sorts of clinical measures from imaging, uh, looking at tissues, organs, etc. cetera. Um, as Paul Aviak, uh, one of our, our partners at Harvard, uh, points out, the, the key challenge here is to build uh, what is like the Google Maps uh, for clinical uh, research. 
That is, we need to have um, a single unifying point in the Google Maps that is a GPS location in which we can bring many layers of data together. Uh, for, uh, for our type of research, for translational research, that GPS location is the patient. And to bring all the data that we can bear for that patient, the molecular data, the, the clinical data, et cetera, together to bear on that particular patient. And then to be able to gather cohorts of patients and do the types of analysis that we need to do to understand how to stratify these patients, how to find biomarkers, et cetera. Uh, the technical background of the platform breaks into three main parts. Uh, we have uh, the data warehouse in the middle of this, a large-scale enterprise-wide uh, uh, data warehouse. Uh, we have the uh, loading uh, functions in which we need to curate and load clinical data, biomarker data, and contextual information in ways that these data can be linked together and work together and we can query across these. So we have to work on having standard ontologies, taxonomies, and vocabularies. And uh, this is one of the key challenges of bringing data into the Transmart environment. Uh, once the data is in there, then we have a series of tools for mining, uh, extracting, analyzing those data, and then browsing and working with this data and exporting to other types of tools for further analysis. Um, all these types of functions you'll be able to see uh, live as we do the, do the data thon. Um, the key ethos of the foundation, it, it really follows on <coughs> uh, some key items, what I would call from the Linux Foundation playbook. Uh, we're about open communication uh, with an open community. Everything's publicly visible and accessible. Uh, we really try to facilitate communication, and you'll see that. Uh, we uh, license work in such a way that everyone can benefit from our GPL v3 licenses on our code to our uh, Creative Commons uh, CCBY attribution license on our documentation. Um, we're also working on this in the area of data as well. But the idea is to bring licenses to the work that allow people to share and collaborate and, and build upon the, the shoulders of giants in which they stand. And then open sets of tools. Uh, the goal here is to enable anyone, from someone at a large pharma company to someone at a small nonprofit to an independent scientist, to be able to work with these data resources and these tools uh, to do scientific research. The datathon. What is a datathon? I think a lot of people have asked these these questions. <clears throat> a datathon is really a hackathon where we're focused on data. A hackathon is is an event that uh, many people here have participated in, in the past but it's a, a gathering together of developers around a couple of key organizing concepts without too much structure and innovation, uh, but to allow them to work together in, in ways uh, that really require little energy of activation. So what we've organized is a three-day workshop. Um, it challenges researchers and data scientists uh, to turn data and information into knowledge. Uh, the format is modeled after hackathons, which we've done many of in the past. Uh, the difference is that we are focused around research questions and data sets. Uh, data sets, uh, not particular application challenges, but, but the concept and the execution is the same. Um, at a datathon, the participants will work in teams uh, to frame the research questions around some guidance that we provide. They'll create and implement a research design, they'll mobilize various data resources and software and tools, and then they'll present their findings at the end of the datathon in front of a panel of judges um, and to the rest of the, of the datathon participants for review. Uh, why is a datathon a good idea? Uh, well, what it does is it brings scientists and computational uh, professionals, uh, statisticians, data scientists together into a, a collaborative working environment with a very low energy of activation to work with people they may not have otherwise ever even met um, and, and without requiring a great deal of commitment. It's a three-day exercise that people get together and work together and then they can go off their different directions. Um, but many times what we see coming out of <clears throat> hackathons and datathons and, and other approaches like this is that people form new relationships that they've continued to pursue outside of this and we see new uh, products, new capabilities, new functionality develop uh, coming from these collaborative exercises. So our hope here is to again uh, not just have some interesting results come out of the datathon itself but from a, a social experiment perspective to bring people together in new kinds of ways that they can take away with them and use to further their research as they go forward. Um, a datathon is nothing without its sponsors. Um, we have a, a number of key sponsors working with us to, to bring this datathon off uh, for you. Uh, we have Perkin Elmer, um, who has come on as a, a platinum sponsor uh, and really getting behind the use of Transmart for this type of research, and particularly integration with uh, their Spotfire platform, which they'll be bringing to the datathon and working with people to, to integrate as well. 
Uh, our silver sponsor, Thomson Reuters, is also hosting the event uh, at their site in Boston. Uh, Thomson Reuters has been very active in the community. Um, in fact, uh, has been working with the Michael J. Fox Foundation to organize uh, the data sets, uh, many of the data sets that we'll be working with into Transmart uh, for this, uh, this data fund. And then IDBS, a uh, very well-known uh, database uh, and uh, uh, application services company in the UK. I will be sponsoring the dinner that we'll be having on, the, on day two of the Datathon as well. Uh, the organizers, I'd like to thank everyone that's helped organize this. This has been uh, <coughs> uh, much more difficult to organize than our typical hackathon uh, overall, uh, but it's been a great team that has come together to help do this. On the foundation side, I just want to thank Kevin Smith, Terry Weymouth, uh, Rudy, uh, and Peter Rice. Um, from Michael J. Fox Foundation, Ken, you've been great. Uh, Jamie Everly has been uh, very, very helpful. And then we have a, a, another a cast of people that have been uh, helping out quite substantially, uh, including Axel from Imperial, Brian uh, from Michigan, Dan from PE, uh, Jay from Pfizer, uh, Julie from Rancho, Sean from Thompson Reuters, along with help from Ceremon, uh, Sherry Sal from Sanofi, uh, Venkata from uh, uh, Luxembourg, and, and Alistair Bullard from uh, British Telecom. Uh, there have been many others that have helped out behind the scenes, but I just wanted to point these people out in, in particular. As we pulled this together, uh, the organizing committee developed <coughs> three key areas that we wanted to focus on as, as potential objectives uh, for the meeting. Um, one is, is that uh, access to these data, when you're bringing together data for uh, particular sets of analyses, the Parkinson's data sets we have here with the Alzheimer's data sets, um, is one of the challenges. How do you make this more accessible to the average scientist? Transmart is an expert system. It requires some expertise to operate. How can we make that more facile and, and <clears throat> interesting? Um, so this is one of the key objectives: is to make the data more accessible uh, to the average pay, the average scientist. Um, we have CBIA Portal as a potential model, and uh, CBIA Portal I think is a very interesting one. It's a platform that was recently open sourced, and uh, it's one that uh, we're looking to bring more uh, more closely uh, aligned with. Transmart as we move forward, uh, but I think it's a very good example. So the challenge is to come up with some portal models to consider for the design and to present those. The second one is focused on biomarkers across um, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases. That is to, to look across these diseases, having them in the same analytical system, the same platform with the same kinds of data for the first time. Um, how can we look across these on, in that kind of a way to see what's common, what's different, what's unique? Um, this includes pathway analysis, visualization integration, uh, working with things like Cytoscape and the Metacore um, workflow that's been built into the Transmart platform. So we're looking for some really interesting uh, findings across uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And the third is, is a, let's just not confine ourselves to biomarkers and stratification. But again, having these data sets, we have uh, 15 data sets uh, brought together in the Transmart platform. Um, what kinds of findings can we make about these diseases? Uh, these are the suggestions of the organizing committee. Um, as the teams come together, they're uh, free to take these on or to take on uh, objectives that they feel uh, that are important on their own. The only real uh, requirement there is that they be of scientific interest and that we present the results at the end of the, of the data thon. Uh, the list of participants, we have uh, 31 at, at this point. Um, uh, not just uh, participants themselves, but we have some support staff coming from the foundation uh, and some vendors coming in to help us with their tools and, and capabilities as well. Um, we wanted to limit this at 20. We're actually a bit oversubscribed, um, but uh, I think we'll be able to, to handle the, the people that we have. And uh, when we look across, uh, one of our key goals here is to, then to reach across uh, industry, across academia, across foundations. And we can see that we've uh, done a pretty good job of that. We have representatives across uh, four or five different pharma companies, Pfizer, Takeda, Sanofi, um, and Biogen. Um, and we have small companies like GNS Healthcare participating, academics from Imperial College, University of Michigan, University of Luxembourg, uh, from uh, MGH and Harvard. Uh, we're pretty excited about the mix of people that we're bringing together. If one looks at the backgrounds, we have a mix of data scientists, statisticians, uh, some developers, scientific software developers, and some neuroscientists. Um, it really should be an exciting, exciting uh, uh, environment for, for our participants. So what's going to happen? Well, the, the first thing that happens when we come together is that people will form into teams. 
Uh, we're not pre-organizing this. Um, the idea is that people come together, we'll have a short period of introductions, uh, and then people can self-assemble into uh, four to five teams of, you know, of anywhere from four to six people. Um, we hope for a mix of scientists, statisticians, and developers uh, that can work together in a multiple, multiple disciplinary type approach. Uh, the foundation will be there to help facilitate the organization of teams, but this should really be a self-organization. Um, the first objective is for the team to consider and form objectives. We'll have a couple of key presentations to help formulate things in people's minds. Uh, but the objectives um, are self-selected. People select those that they feel that uh, they really want to work on and they want to push forward. Uh, and what we have are three days for people to work together. Well, I guess if you look at it overall, it's two and a half days. Uh, for people to work together, um, no real uh, requirements as to, you know, just working in the space. Can you go back to the hotel and keep working, et cetera? That's fine. Uh, but the idea is to pursue new approaches to address the key objectives that they've defined. On the third day, uh, the final day, we'll have uh, in the afternoon a series of uh, final presentations by each team uh, and we'll have a judges panel that will review these and uh, we'll give out a series of awards uh, for the best solutions in each area. Um, one of the key questions that people ask is, well, what, what happens to the work that's done at the Datathon? Number one, uh, everyone uh, will be executing a CDA at the Datathon, so this is not a public disclosure. So if anybody discovers interesting intellectual property, they're free to pursue that. Um, the data that we have there is subject to data use agreements. You'll have to abide by those data use agreements. Uh, but anything that you do uh, within those confines, you can take with you, you can work with, you can continue to present, publish, or, or work with as you, as you see fit. So uh, the key thing is, is that we're taking all the, the necessary steps that we need to to ensure that you can take those results and, and do what you want with them. The foundation has no hold on this. Uh, no one else outside has any hold on this. You're just subject to the data use agreements that you, you need to execute before accessing these data. What are the data? Uh, well, the data uh, are hosted in Transmart version 1.2.4. Uh, the data are hosted at the Laboratory of Neuroimaging at USC. Uh, we've been working closely with Loney and with uh, Thomson Reuters, University of Luxembourg, uh, the Foundation, uh, etc., to uh, to get this platform installed, uh, optimized, and ready to go. There, uh, this has been a bit of a challenge. Our initial approach was to do this uh, using um, our hosted platforms on the cloud, uh, but because of the data use agreements that these data sets are subject to, we weren't able to do that. Uh, I want to thank Art Toga who worked with us on this. Uh, to to help us um, come up with a solution where we could host Transmart at Loney and uh, meet the terms of the data use agreements for these data sets. Uh, the private data sets that are available here are the ADME, PPMI, BioFind, and LERC2 data sets. In addition, we have a set of 10 uh, curated public data sets that have been curated by the University of Luxembourg and provided by them. Um, if there are other data sets that people want to load, that can be accomplished as well. Uh, there will be some external resources available. The University of Luxembourg has some servers up with additional data, other resources, and you're free to bring any other kinds of tools and data and capabilities to the Datathon uh, that you see fit um, as long as um, you have the legal rights to, to use those for the Datathon. And uh, that is up to you to determine. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask us. A uh, quick look at the, uh, at the Transmart instance at Loney. Um, this is, again, uh, 1.2.4. Um, it's running on the Loney servers. Um, each person that has been approved, and we've uh, submitted applications uh, for all of the uh, confirmed participants for these four data sets. Um, you all should have also gotten an email uh, to individually apply for these data sets. The individual application is really important. Um, if you want to take and work with these data after you leave the datathon, you'll need to do that. Um, in addition, um, we've been asked by Loney to make sure that all individuals have individually applied for these data. So please make sure you do that and we'll be contacting you in the next week to ensure that you've, uh, you've made those applications and that you're approved. Uh, we won't be able to allow anyone who's not approved to access the, the hosted instance at, uh, um, at Loney. So uh, you can see that we have the, uh, uh, the geo data sets, the, the public data sets uh, are loaded here. The private studies are loaded. Um, give you a sense of some of the more detail. Um, you can see the number of, of patients in each of the sets of data. So there's 20 patients in this data set, 105 in this one. In the ADME data set we have 3,150, BioFind 232, PPMI 1307, and LERC 2841. 
Uh, just looking at the, the, the level of uh, detail here, um, uh, all the data that has been clinically made available, et cetera, has been curated into the platform um, over an extensive period by Thomson Reuters and, and loaded in here. Uh, we have all the diagnostic data, the clinical data, biomarker data. Um, as we drill, drill down, you can see imaging data, medical histories, um, biomarker assessments, uh, et cetera. Um, with the geo data sets we have as well as we have biomarker data, high dimensional data, uh, various samples and time points as well. So we have in this data set uh, <clears throat> over 5,000 patients uh, data represented from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. To drill down to the data a little bit, the PPMI data includes uh, various uh, assessments. We have motor assessments and non-motor assessments biospecimens, enrollment, imaging data, medical history data, and subject characteristics. Uh, the outlines you see here colored in, in red <coughs> are those, um, uh, those variables that have been aligned across the data sets so that one can look then across these data sets and make sure that we have the same representation in the data from PPMI to ADNI data. The ADNI data, um, here we have um, uh, over 6,000 uh, columns of data. Uh, we have, again, assessments, diagnosis, and neurophysiological assessments. Um, uh, all the dark blue have been curated and loaded. We have the lab results. We have um, adverse events, drugs, medical history, family history, demographics, and then some selected data as well that have been loaded from enrollments, uh, genetic data, and imaging data. Uh, one of the key things we can work on in the data fund, if we find use for other aspects of these data, et cetera, and we need to get some of these things done or loaded. Those are things that we can work on uh, in the course of the datathon as well. In addition, we have the BioFind data set. This is a, another um, Michael J. Fox Foundation sponsored data set. That's an observational clinical study to discover and verify biomarkers of Parkinson's disease. Um, we've got clinical data and biospecimens, including blood and CSF. Um, we have, I believe it was 280-some uh, patients total in this set and it's a complement to the PPMI. And then one of the data sets I'm quite excited about is the uh, genetically determined uh, subset of Parkinson's disease, the, the LRRK2 uh, mutations. Uh, we have uh, this cohort uh, uh, set up of uh, 777 PD patients who carry the mutation, mainly the G2019S mutation. Um, we also have uh, 444 mutation carriers without uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, and then there's 427 controls. This includes demographic, demographic information, neurological history, medication history, uh, MOCA, ADL, uh, et cetera. Uh, again, very, very rich data sets, and we're pretty excited about being able to bring these all together um, into the same, uh, the same uh, Transmart instance. So those are the resources, those are capabilities. What's the agenda? Well, day one, uh, we're going to start out and get people together, um, have a quick introduction. Um, everybody will be able to introduce themselves. We'll give a background overview and goals for the datathon, as uh, much as we have today. Um, we're looking to bring a couple of key patient perspectives to help drive that uh, throughout the, the day one. Um, and there'll be a, a couple of presentations, both from the Michael J. Fox Foundation and Transmart Foundation on collaborative science. Uh, people will, be, will then break into working groups. Uh, they'll outline their own goals and objectives. There'll be people around to help and lots of questions and answers that we can take care of. But the idea is, is to get to work as quickly as possible. Day two, um, we'll start out with just a short review, questions and answers to start the day, and then everybody will get back into their groups. Uh, we'll have a lunch presenter that we're organizing uh, around that. And then uh, at the end of day two, we'll have a group dinner uh, where everyone can come together for dinner, conversation, um, you know, kind of a relaxed uh, means of, of, of collaborating. Day three is the final day. Uh, there will be a quick morning review, short Q&A. We'll have the final working session, uh, and then we set up in the afternoon two hours for reporting. That is, um, each team will review its strategy, its process, and its results with whatever key findings they've had. Those will be presented in front of a, a five-person a judging panel, um, and then we'll have uh, a set of awards given and a quick summary uh, uh, and departure at 4 p.m. So this is the outline. It's more structured than our typical hackathon, but I think it, it really fits what we're doing as a datathon. And this is a learning experience, I think, for everyone. So um, everyone should be feel free to speak up, to, to bring forward their own uh, insights, et cetera, as we go along through the process. 
Uh, the awards um, will have five different awards. So there'll be a top award for each of the key missions, the biomarker award, the research findings award, and the portal splash page award. And then we'll have an award for best presentation and for most innovative approach. So uh, these are the key awards that the judging panel will be uh, assessing and awarding. Uh, the judges, um, uh, at this point, we have four out of the five. I'm still uh, working on uh, several candidates for the fifth position. Uh, but it'll be myself and Ken uh, as key organizers, uh, Jamie from Michael J. Fox, Sherry uh, from the foundation in Sanofi, uh, and as I said, one judge to be named later, um, who we're, we hope to confirm in the next couple of days. The tools and rules, um, basically, you'll need to bring your own laptop to work on. Everybody needs to have their, their own laptop. Um, you're allowed to use any data analysis, data processing, or data visualiz visualization tool that you feel comfortable with as long as you have the rights to use it. Uh, that's up to you to determine. We will provide access to the Datathon Transmart instance hosted in Loney, and that will be only to approved investigators. Um, our technical team will be there sharing technical expertise in case you need some help. We'll have people both on site and remote. Uh, we'll have a number of, of vendors there that will be uh, providing you some capability around their tools and capabilities. Uh, one that we're excited about is uh, we have the new Spotfire connector uh, that's been developed uh, by the Hive and Perkin Elmer. And we'll have uh, people from Perkin Elmer there to help you use Spotfire, which is a, a very powerful tool for data analysis uh, in the context of these data sets. Um, for any data sets that have data usage agreements, um, you are responsible for abiding by the data usage agreements for all data sets used in the Datathon. And uh, you'll have a quick uh, set of forms to sign when you, when you join the Datathon on the first day, uh, which will be a confidentiality agreement and uh, uh, an agreement that says that you'll abide by the data use agreements. Um, those will be provided to you uh, ahead of time so you can review them, but we'll make sure that we get those executed at the Datathon. Um, if there are other data sets and other capabilities, uh, I know that uh, Venkata Satagapam uh, from Luxembourg will have a number of key resources. They've got the uh, uh, PB map that they've developed that they'll be using as a tool in this process. Um, they'll be providing some access to data resources on their servers at Luxembourg. Um, there are other investigators that will be bringing those resources as well. You know, feel free to do that. Uh, please just make sure that you respect the rights uh, uh, for each of the sets of tools and data sources that you select to use. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up here, given the emphasis on, on rights and, and availability, is um, our intention as the foundation was to focus on really working with open data. And open data uh, for us means uh, it's data that should be freely available to everyone to use and specifically to republish without restriction from copyright patents or other mechanisms of control. There's a large open data movement out in the world. We see open data coming from various governments, both uh, federal and, and civil, um, lots of GPS data. Um, when we look at what open data facilitates in our world, it's, it's really tremendous. And one of the key things about open data is making sure that people can work with it, they can share it, they can um, you know, mark it up and mash it up and connect it to other data. I think data is much more useful when it's connected to other data, which is what we're seeing with this Transmart instance, is where we've connected you know, a total of, of 15 different data sets together um, in the same system in a new, new kind of way. Uh, the goals of the open data movement are similar to for other open movements, open source, open software, you know, open hardware, open content, and open access. Um, the philosophy has long been established for these, uh, but the term open data these days uh, is actually being misused quite a bit um, as we go along. Um, one of the challenges is when you look at open data and you look at the, the publishing requirements for lots of different data uh, from scientific research, the key challenge is, is that people can, can obscure and, and obfuscate. Um, to address this, uh, Tim Berners-Lee from the, the original the development of the World Wide Web uh, has come up with a five-star ranking system for openness of data. Um, so if you make your stuff available on the web uh, under some sort of open license, open license being that you can take and work with it and republish it, uh, that would be a one-star rating. Um, many data sets, in fact, data sets that we'll be working with um, do not make that because they're not distributed under an open license. <clears throat> but um, if you do that and you, you submit it in such a way like a PDF or whatnot, an image file, um, that's not all that useful, uh, which is why it's a one-star rating. A two-star rating is to make structured data available, such as uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. 
The problem with an Excel spreadsheet is it's a proprietary data format. You need to have proprietary tools to work with it. Uh, so that's just a two-star rating. If you submit that in such a way that you can use non-proprietary formats, like a common delimited file or other types of things working with OpenOffice or others, uh, that's a three-star rating because you don't have uh, requirements on proprietary tools to access and utilize the data. A four-star is uh, basically posting that on the web in such a way that not only do people have access to the data, but they can point to it and they can look at it as a persistent uh, object on the web. And then five star is to link your data to other data to provide context. Uh, the goal of the foundation is five star data, that is to link data together. What we're doing with this datathon, with the ADME, PPMI, LERC2, BioFind, and GEO data sets is linking these data together in a new and novel way to enable a type of research that wasn't possible previously. That's really our goal, is to facilitate and, and make five-star uh, open data available and useful to the community. Um, one of the key realities and things that people need to be aware of when they're working with these data sets is that um, the data use agreements for many of these private studies um, are not open licenses. Um, in particular, uh, when we look at some of these data sets, and I've just pulled a couple of key things that people need to be aware of in their data use agreements, and so make sure you read these. Um, for the ADNI data, um, you agree that you will not further disclose these data beyond the uses outlined in your agreement um, and your application. And you understand that redistribution of data in any manner is prohibited. Uh, that's a very important term. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind and make sure that you're, uh, you're aware of that and uh, meeting those obligations. Uh, the PPMI data, again, in the data use agreement, it says, I will not further disclose these data beyond the uses outlined in this agreement. Uh, I will do my best to ensure that investigators who utilize PPMI data use appropriate administrative, physical, and technical safeguards to prevent use or disclosure of the data, other than as provided by this agreement, and will properly report any use or disclosure data that does not comply with these guidelines. Uh, that's a, a, a very serious set of statements, and I think people need to be aware of those as well. Even getting to government-provided data, the Cancer Genome Atlas data use agreement, uh, says uh, that you further agree not to distribute data obtained through this data access request to any entity or any individual not covered in the submitted data access request. Um, this is, is one of the challenges that we have in bringing data together. This is one of the reasons our datathon has been delayed a bit, is to make sure that we comply with these agreements. Um, I think these agreements have been put in place with the best of intentions uh, and the best of, of utility. Uh, but I, one of the things I would love to see is to see these data really come under this five-star openness where we have the ability to link and redistribute data uh, as it makes sense for people to do new and interesting things. One of the key goals of this datathon is to show the utility of bringing these kinds of data together. These you know, 14, 15 different data sets brought together in the same platform, linked, etc. cetera. Um, what kinds of new things can we learn when those data are linked and integrated? Uh, that's really one of our key objectives. Um, uh, I was going to put my, a quick summary in here. Um, but my summary is this, is that uh, we're really excited as, as a, the Transmart Foundation to be hosting this datathon. Uh, we're very excited to be collaborating with the Michael J. Fox Foundation uh, and with our key partners, you know, Perkin Elmer, Thompson Reuters, IDDS, uh, and others uh, to, to make this happen. Um, we're, we're really excited about the potential that we'll see come from this three-day event that is bringing together data scientists, neuroscientists, statisticians, and developers. I'm really hoping that uh, at our annual meeting we have a great number of presentations coming out of this and that people can attend that meeting and, and really see the benefits of this coming together. But I'd like to thank everyone uh, that's, that's helped bring this together and we're looking forward uh, to a great event next week here in Boston. So with that, um, let me uh, turn it back over to, uh, to Rudy and uh, see if there's any questions or, or any uh, issues we can address. Okay, thank you, Keith. Um, if you have a question uh, at this point, uh, you can raise your hand uh, with the electronic dashboard there, uh, or you could type it into the question window. Um, but I will unmute you and you can ask it in person. Any questions? <clears throat> Ken, did you have any uh, any last uh, summarizing statements you'd like to make? Well, we're very excited about uh, the potential of the datathon and what could happen. Um, you know, the Parkinson's Progression Markers Initiative itself is a $120 million study. 
And so all this work um, I'm following the natural history course of Parkinson's disease is really about producing this data. And uh, you know, it's folks like people who are attending the, the datathon that are gonna come up with some answers. So this is um, really uh, kind of the the kind of the head of the spear in terms of what we need to do in, in terms of our mission. Great, thanks, Jim. Well, what I hope is that this uh, serves as a, a real good um, first event for us, that it sets a standard for how we do these events in the future. Uh, what I'd like to see at the at the foundation, I think if anyone out there is, is interested in, in hosting a similar type of event with particular sets of data, uh, come to us, let us know. Uh, we're happy to look at those and, and see which ones we can get behind and we can help facilitate. Uh, this one is one that we're very excited about. We'd love to do one in cancer next year as well. Um, so if there's uh, anyone out there that has that interest, please let us know. Rudy, any questions out there at all? No, no questions um, that I see. Um, I want to thank Keith and Ken uh, for a great presentation. Um, just a reminder, we've got two more webinars, one tomorrow uh, with uh, Venkata and his team from Luxembourg will present uh, their data sets and, and their uh, PD map, et cetera. And then on Thursday, we'll have presentations from Kirk and Elmer on Spotfire and IO Informatics. So please join us for those. Uh, also, all the webinars are being recorded and these will be posted uh, on our website uh, and you can review them. If you have colleagues who were not able to make it, uh, please uh, invite them to uh, review the recordings as well. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, participating and uh, we're looking forward to having a great uh, datathon next week. Thank you. Thank you.